Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a new installment of our Silver Nugget series where we talk with subject matter matter experts and today we have a lovely old friend that is gracing us with her wit her wisdom and her overall kindness we have Nina Terol and hi. she is hi Nina thank you for sharing your lovely face and time with us today yeah, so Nina is actually the creator and founder of a really exciting thing called Girl Make the First Move. And she is with us. She is, yeah, it sounds so intriguing, right? And she's going to share with us a lot of the progress that she has made in, in this arena of women empowerment and more. So, um. Today, we are going to specifically be talking about communicating your purpose. And I want to start with our first question. They might, there might be a mini question attached, but can, yeah, you please, can you please tell us, uh, Nines, about your role as a change maker? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, of course, that's uh, self-described. I labeled myself that. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's part of, I suppose it's part of the brand that I want to be able to tell about myself. But my role as a change maker or my consciousness of my role as a change maker really came about when um, I started uh, over a decade ago, maybe about almost 15 years ago now, I moved from being an advocate for like social and political reforms, um, mm -hmm. actually working in government. And that was my first taste of what it's like to, you know, fight for something, ask for something, and then you get the opportunity to do it and you have to do it, right? You have right. to work with the system to get the changes you're looking for. So that was my first taste of that. But essentially, to me, what uh, being a change maker really means is uh, being able to find and identify the spaces where you can make a personal impact Mm -hmm. And really bring your gifts and your talents into that space. So you can really make a difference. In my case, it was my gift in communications that um, that kind of flowed into policy. And then later on, it's, you know, advocating for other causes. And, and now with, with Girl Make the First Move, it's um, using my network in women empowerment to really be able to um, create more impact for younger girls and uh, women who are starting out in their careers or even you know those who uh, need to be empowered and inspired in their careers as well yeah that's such a that's such a nice advocacy and it's something that we really really need with what's happening in the world today right and so I really want to hear more about what is girl make the first move yeah, so in a nutshell, um, I call it a gem. It's a global empowerment movement. Mm -hmm. For now, it's a small gem, but you know, planning Ooh, to. Oh, you love big. acronyms just like yes. we do. <laughs> I know, right? Acronyms <laughs> and uh, alliterations. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a global empowerment movement that aims to really inspire and empower girls and women of all ages, whether you're seven or 17 or 70. Right? Mm -hmm. To make positive first moves in different areas of their lives. So um, we ran a girls congress uh, over the past few months and we were talking a lot about self-love and, you know, mental wellness, making first moves in, you know, your education, pursuing your passion projects, also becoming a global change maker. So there are many avenues where you can take first moves, starting with yourself, to your family, to your community. Um, but we shouldn't wait for anyone's permission, right? To be able to make those first moves for ourselves. Oh, yes. And had we had people like you in our day growing up championing such powerful messages and themes, maybe it would look a lot different, you know, mm -hmm. as we were trying to find our way also through, through whatever path we were trying to create for ourselves. And, and I really... I applaud you and I stand with you because this is such an important time, I think, to be to be a young person, yeah. right? And I'm I getting so. goosebumps. <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps again. When I talk to you, that happens. <laughs> it's our energy, right? Super. Yeah. And um, I think it doesn't need a lot of context, you know, mm -hmm. because it's really... 
it's really time. Actually, it was mm-hmm. time 100 years ago. But, exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. Um, in our last video, Nines, we talk about uh, the four C's of, of communication and the fourth one being captivating. And mm-hmm. can you tell us a bit more about how this ties in with the creation of your personal brand? Okay, that's a really great question because when you create your personal brand, right? Brand is all about everything that somebody else experiences. Mm -hmm. You are what you're trying to build. So if you're trying to build a personal brand, it's about the stories you tell about yourself. It's the way you act, the way people experience you, the messages you share, your look and feel, etc. Right? So how do you make that captivating and i think captivating it's also a beautiful word because it's capturing something it's really sparking the imagination so right to be captive you really have to be multi-sensory mm-hmm. so when you're communicating for example um visually um through how you look and through how you sound um your energy has to be high you really have to be able to connect with an audience if you're sharing uh, things on your Instagram feed, for example, it's really the multi-sensory nature of it, right? Your photos have to really come alive. But essentially, I think being captivating re- means being able to turn the truth or this the message that you're trying to share into something people can see and feel and experience for themselves. So it's also about the power of story. Mm-hmm. So this is you share your personal stories so that you can connect with other people. Your truth resonates with their truth. And then, you know, when you get goosebumps, right? Right. Um, when you share those goosebump moments with each other, it's because you're able to relate with each other. So I think it's important for us to be able to know what stories about myself or my work do I share so that other people can relate and it really opens up their imagination in all their senses. That's re- very well put. And would you liken it to something like productizing yourself? Um, in a way, yes. So um, productizing is definitely one way to put it. I don't know if that's a word. I think people in marketing use it a lot. So <laughs> if you were to productize yourself, you imagine yourself. Okay, for example, me, right? If me and F9 were a product, what would I be? And uh, I liken my personal brand to something like I tell people I'm solar powered. So when I mm-hmm. come into a room, I want to make sure I light up the room. I bring in a lot of energy. So when I'm speaking, even from a Zoom video, I want to make sure that the voice and energy are high, um, etc. But uh, when you say productizing, you also want to imagine how do people experience you? How do yes. people, like what is, um, how do they get to, use is not a really good word, but how do they experience <laughs> you? How, how are you able to make yourself accessible, I think, to other people? Yeah, accessible so is a good, Productizing. Yeah. yeah, think of yourself as how do people reach you? How do people experience what you do best? How mm-hmm. do you offer a service unlike any other? And how do you make yourself memorable, right? Or unforgettable um, positively. <laughs> positively. Right. Thank you for qualifying that. <laughs> yes. in, in the minds and hearts of the people around you. Yes, yes. We, w- we want to be remembered mostly for the good. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> because a lot of people do stuff out there, you know, yeah. be, to be seen, to be heard. But ah. you're right. We got to remember that it's all about the positive right. impact. <laughs> and social media is vicious. So really, let's be careful. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It really is. We always have to be, yeah, careful, hyper vigilant. You know, that, that, that's a word that I yep. keep experiencing because of these pandemic times, you know, the, the hyper vigilance of that's required of all of us. Um, yep. Yeah. And I thought I needed to pause <laughs> to just, um, yeah, take that all in. So, mm-hmm. Nines, how important. Is it that you know your purpose as you are creating your personal brand? Wow. Um, This is actually the toughest part of creating your brand. But 
in any product, in any marketing or advertising exercise, the first thing that marketers and advertisers will do is to really know the product truths and the brand truths and the purpose of that brand. For example, toothpaste or um, I'm dating myself with this example, you know, close up <laughs> back in the day. They had all of these commercials you about know? boy and girl. Hey. You know, like, boy and girl coming together of course if you're about to have a romantic moment you want to have fresh breath right so they those marketers identified that the purpose of close-up was to make you smell good right right Right. for the person you're trying to attract because maybe from afar you're okay but when you come close so um for versus for example colgate who was a bit more scientific with how they have fluoride Etc. It's gonna so, get worse uh, because I did that chalk experiment all the time. <laughs> the younger people will not understand. Like, right? Chalk, like people would. What is chalk? But, but so even as a person, you have to know what's my purpose, so that when I communicate my brand, and in this case, I put change maker in my label. That has to be true for me. I I cannot attach a brand label to myself. That is not true. Because mm-hmm. people will automatically find out that, well, that's not exactly who you are, right? You're right, right. So your purpose is the first step to really being able to communicate uh, your brand or who you are to the world. So, Nines, what kinds of questions would one ask oneself to find oh, out? Yeah. To find out, okay, we're not going to go into a whole, you know, full-blown course, know, but, but like yeah. maybe one or two questions that could be a guiding light as to yeah. what, what is my purpose? <laughs> I, would, I would encourage um, our viewers to look up the concept of ikigai. So okay. I-K-I-G-A-I. That's a Japanese term that means re- reason for being or your purpose. And mm-hmm. there are diagrams you will see about um, Ikigai is a combination of what you love, what you do best, what the world needs, and what you're paid for. If you're still too young to get paid, you know, the combination of the other three. But um, I actually just came from uh, speaking at a retreat uh, two days ago, and I my takeaway for them was your purpose is actually a combination of play plus pain. Yeah. So purpose equals play plus pain. Pain. What does that mean? Um, you also look back to your childhood. What were the things that came so naturally to you that you just loved? In my case, I loved pretending I was an actress. <laughs> in front of the camera. I saw you do that invisible stage. curtsy. <laughs> right? Like with a microphone. So, um, and then I loved Legos. I also had a chalkboard. I loved to pretend I was a teacher. Hence, all, yes. I guess, all the public speaking and training. So, look back into what were the things you loved to do for play mm-hmm. when you were a kid? Because that comes naturally to you. That brings out the joy. But also, where does your pain come from? What are your pain points? In my case, I became an advocate for social reform because you know i wanted social justice etc etc so Mm -hmm. the combination of the things that pain you that you're willing to fight for and the things that you love that spark joy for you in the intersection of that you will find your purpose coming out there that's so beautiful really and it's very simple and it's something that i think a lot of people will have aha moments Mm-hmm. after having heard you say it that way. Um, mm-hmm. So that's so nice. That's really, really, really good. Um, another example I wanted to, to illustrate about the purpose portion, uh, another speaker that I follow that is so inspiring to me, her name is Vanessa Van Edwards. Mm-hmm. She said, what do you want your day to look like? When you're exactly. thinking hour by hour, Yeah. what do you right? want it to look like? Right? Yeah. In and my case, um, here in my desk, I even have Legos here. Um, my Lego, they're part of being playful, but because I also now facilitate sessions using Lego, parents like, I don't mind filling my days with these things, right? Or right, conversing right. with people. Because it makes you happy and you get better at doing something when you're happy doing it. Yes. Joy is really an important motivator. When I was talking to mm-hmm. another good friend about it and I was saying, you know, yeah, what do you want your calendar to look like she said and she was really honest she was like i want it to look like money <laughs> well 
right? So at least she knows what she needs to do if that's right. what she wants her calendar to look like. Yeah. Right. right. So it's important, I guess, that you are, not I guess, but I know that you are honest with, with what those things are, right? And sometimes it's not as easy as as that person that said that, you know, I, I want it to look like this because it's, it's mm-hmm. really sitting down with with what's inside and sometimes it's really easy but sometimes it may not be for some oh yeah right and That's it changes different. right oh yeah it can it change or it evolves yeah so, i think there will always be an evolution as you yourself mature as you develop new skills as you change life stages you know earlier on my purpose is really anchored on communication because i'm right. a writer I speak and now later on in my career, it's also really about leadership and mentoring. So as you get wiser, mm-hmm. <laughs> right, um, more things will come your way and you'll have more tools and resources and skill sets and gifts that you can also share with others. Yeah. And when you share, you know, it it multiplies, right? All the good mm-hmm. stuff multiplies okay. and it becomes yeah. part of your legacy as well. Mm, that is so true. Okay, so I, I think it's a really nice transition into the last question. Um, so what would you tell the young listeners, perhaps not just the women that are thinking mm-hmm. about, you know, what career path to undertake or perhaps they're already starting? Mm-hmm. What things yeah, you would know, you tell these young people? Um, pardon me, I'm getting emotional, so you might see tears here. Uh, That's- but, That's a first. Uh, I'm usually the one. <laughs> so I beat you to it. So that you feel comfortable in case it happens to you. It's okay. It's happening to me right now. <laughs> Just hope the mascara doesn't smudge. But um, no, it's so beautiful for me. I welcome it. <laughs> Thank you. It's really, so, really being just, um, you know. Yeah. And, and really uh, authentic. Because the first thing I would really say um, to anybody at any age. So whether you're young. And it's often harder when you're young, Mm -hmm. but also harder when you have a lot of baggage already. But the first is to really know your truth. Um, Truth these days is so fleeting. You don't know anymore what's true, right? But as a person, you have to start with knowing what's true for you, what's authentic for you. What are your values and beliefs? What are the principles you will stand by? Um, that's the first thing because your purpose is often very closely aligned to your values and you know your integrity principles etc yeah so you know your truth first so that you can speak that truth right um and again it's easier said than done especially when you're younger but it's important that as you start out in your career that you're always um truthful to who you are and um what you believe in what aligns with you Um, So I, I, and then of course, you know, your truth, you speak your truth and you live out the truth. Mm. Um, Be as aligned as you can be with the truth. So I'll, I'll give an example. Yes. What, you know, your parents wanted you to be, become an accountant. You know, that's where they say that's where the money is. Okay. For our, um, you know, there are different um, generations have certain preferences for jobs, but in in my time, as accountant, lawyer, et cetera. Right. So let's say your parents say, Okay, be an accountant, bring in the money for the family, sure. And so my advice to you would be, um, of course, number one, no, is this really the right path for you? I mean, are you good at numbers to begin with, right? Can you be honest with the numbers? Um, so, okay, let's say we've established you're good at numbers. Make sure that you are as truthful as you can be to, I guess, an, whatever honor code accountants have make sure that you really bring your your ethics and your integrity into the job do it the best possible way and and then you know there will be times you will come into um moral and ethical dilemmas then you decide is this still the job for you is this still the company for you Mm -hmm. um you will always be met by those so if you know what you stand for then it will be easier to make a decision that you can say okay Money here is good, but it's making me compromise the standards of my accounting profession. I better move on somewhere else. Right? But that confidence only comes from knowing and being really sure that this is what I stand for. Therefore, I know how to decide. Right. And I think we were 
we were very lucky to have had the education that that we mm-hmm. both enjoyed and at mm-hmm. the time when education didn't feel like something to be enjoyed <laughs> you know when you're younger it's it's all your right. it's all your obligations but i think you're able to mm-hmm. articulate this so well also because of that background that we mm-hmm. were we were fortunate mm-hmm. to have i mean very grateful for all that but you know also f- try to find good mentors or at least good examples and good yes. role models very fortunate to have had really great bosses um not everyone will be so lucky so try to find good role models around you who can mm-hmm. also inspire you to do better uh, at what you're currently doing right that's really really sound advice and and it stays with you regardless mm-hmm. of the time that you spend or or spent in that particular organization right when you have a good oh, boss yeah. You really don't want to let them down, and you feel oh, like yeah. there are these there are these eyes that are are, mm-hmm. are paying attention, mm-hmm. and yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yep. And yep. there's something about their energy. One of my first bosses, if if I can just um share okay. with you, nines, was into pranic healing, and I didn't believe in any of these things. But when we would have our one on ones, he would. <laughs> practice and you really wow. felt you really felt um that's something amazing. in there <laughs> in a good wow, way that's a gift, that's a gift yeah. huh? in wow. a good way yeah to be a leader in that role and to uh use your power because <laughs> mm-hmm. it felt like actual um felt like actual power you know the energy that um mm-hmm. and, and at that age i was just such a, a cynic so mm-hmm. yeah, really nice that you mentioned that. And I guess also with your peers, right? Anyone can be a mentor. I have many um, friends whom I call like reverse mentors because they're younger than me. Or mm-hmm. actually sometimes they're my subordinates. They're my one dance. But they speak tough love to me. So it feels like a mentoring session and I'm the one being mentored by wow. someone younger. And be open to that. That's true. But that's also because you're very humble and, and accepting so it's not easy to to divulge. <laughs> I don't know if that's the word, <laughs> but it's not it's not difficult to have that kind of a dialogue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Truly. Is is there any? Because I'm just so shocked. Our interview is done. <laughs> I know. I have nothing else to ask you. <laughs> is there is there I'm any not- last? nugget that you can share um before we close and thank our viewers you know um i've seen some of your other videos uh, as well and it's often been mentioned you know imposter syndrome and we all have it so i'd also encourage your your viewers to read up more on that but anytime imposter syndrome hits mm-hmm. just remind yourself that i am the only person in the world who has the combination of all of these gifts and skill sets. So nobody can be an imposter to me, right? Um, some, some people will try and there's now online fraud and whatever. So some people right. will try. But nobody can be an imposter to everything that I bring into this world. So when you go into that world and you share your gifts, like do it wholeheartedly and authentically because only you can do it your way. So diba? in a nutshell, you do you diba? and do you well Right? Yes. And you will be amazing. Yeah, very, very well said. It was so inspiring this chat with you, Nines. I'm really, Thank really so glad much, and yeah. grateful you made time because there were so many rich, rich nuggets just naturally flowing out of your body. <laughs> Thank you for sharing with us so, so much. I mean, Thank you so much for this time, Via, really. It, this, this is a very busy lady. And has so many things going on for her. And I'm sure more good things are going to come your way. Because that's just what you bring. That's really just what you bring. Thank you so much. So girls, remember, make the first move. And to all the men and everyone else out there, please be an ally for everybody else around you. Yes. Very well said again. For everybody watching, please share with us if you have picked up something from our little chat with Miss Nina Terol 
And we'd like to know if finding your purpose is something you are still trying to do. Just leave us a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thanks for watching and keep growing with Silver Jane.